Hello, Nitroners, and welcome back to another episode of VFX with Nitron. So, today we're going to look at part two of making a winter title sequence, um, you know, for our Christmas, because it's the Christmassy season and, well, other seasons, it's all kinds of, you know, holiday seasons, whatever. It, it's something that, that seasonal. Anyhow, uh, so let's uh, talk about today's goal. We, we we looked at it last time, but today's goal, uh, this is the more polished version, looks like this. So last time we were in Natron, this is what we had left off with, which is a, a, a snow. And I wanted to talk about an issue that we uh, we we face, um, which is, of course, that we're not doing this with uh, Shader Toy or any plugin of any or any non-native plugin. This was all done using native nodes. And we we did this triple layer set up and um, I actually have done some modifications to this. Uh, this is what we where we left off last time, um, but I'm going to switch over because I did a couple things because I realized, you know, the whole goal of this was to to make this render as fast as possible, but it is not uh, as optimized as we could make it. Um, so um, the question that uh, come the big the big crux right you now now as far as I uh, see it is that I stated that we weren't using icy noise for making the snow itself because, well, there was two reasons. Uh, one was because of the sizes and it causes flickering. Um, but the second reason is, is it's not as fast as, as the built-in noise. So then it hit me that when I got down to here while we were doing the live stream, I, I suddenly dawned on me that, wait a minute here, these two... Um, we're using three SE noise nodes down here uh, to do basically variations of the same pattern. It's the same pattern, just at different sizes. And it's and we're rendering them all continuously throughout. So I was like, that's a bit of a, an excessive little waste there. Could, could this be made more efficient if we just took and used our biggest pattern um, set to a bigger size and then, uh, and then rendered it uh, or scaled it down using some form of transform node block, the transform node. And so uh, instead of basically, as we can see, if we look at these, we have this one, we have this one, and we have this one, and they all scale from the center point. But you know, so this this is going to change the pattern the way we're going to. Uh, or I did this, um, but basically, instead of using those three, what I decided to do, and I'm going to just show it quickly is I'm going to go over here into a alternate version. This is an updated version where basically what I did is I took, and when I've labeled this, this is going to be the one that's going to be uploaded for people to, to view. Uh, we can see we have the big snow, the medium snow, and the small snow um, pieces, but then we get the constant comes down, and I'll have an extra branch coming out, going out down this way to this SE noise over here. And this SE no noise over here is basically the same SE noise as the big SE noise, except for now it's scaled up to be the size of basically the entire snow field. Um, and the reason that I did that is because I'm, I only want to render this once, and then I want to be able to scale this um, to various sizes. So I need to have enough resolution to scale it down. So then what we did is I cached it, and then I frame I held the first frame, and then I took it and I put it into transform nodes. And so the first transform node, as we can see, all it does is it shrinks it down because this is for the, the this is for the smallest one. We want it furthest back, or well, in theory, it would be the smallest one, but we know we merge it. This is our smallest noise pattern of the bunch. And so all I did is I basically took the whole thing and I, I basically, uh, I took it down to 50% of its size. And then for the medium size one, I took it down, wait a minute, I took it down to 71% of its size. That looked, to be honest, I will say this, 
Um, the reason I took it only down to 51, technically I should have taken it down to about 30, 40%. But I couldn't get it that small without running out of the texture space, and I didn't want to resize the entire texture. So I was like, eh, it's close enough. It's good enough. Um, but so uh, because I was worried that, that the first pattern and the second pattern might be too close in size, what I did is I, I resized the second pattern, and then I offset it. And just to show you, I just set it offset it by negative 500 uh, in the X and Y. Oh yes, and I set the transforms um, so that their their pivot point or their center point is at zero. So they always scale towards the bottom left hand corner as opposed to towards the center. Um, which so that's another ch uh, a slight change from the the other one because as I said the last one was from the center. It's just saved the trouble of having to again offset this stuff. So anyway. Uh, we look at, we can see it's been shifted negative 500, which throws the whole pattern off a little bit. And if we look after each one of these, I also then crop it in so that we can, using a merge node, um, and then taking our constant over here, which dictates this is our constant, that's our output constant, and I just branched it off. Uh, this is what tr basically does the crop at the last second for the whole overall image. And I just cropped it into these and created a second merge to crop them so they match the the 1080p output resolution for the eye distort so we weren't using too much of a uv map on the whole thing we don't need to do the entire thing we just need to do a little bit so that should keep everything working nice and as we can see there's the snow for that layer and then we go over to this one and we look at that's the pattern for the the medium and then this is the pattern for the large which is basically the full size thing um, set to the bottom. Oh, oh, I just kept this one centered because it didn't matter. Anyway, so then then uh, crop down and of course done to the distortion. So the question is, is how much of a savings did this make? Well, it actually made more of a savings than I thought. It actually sped it up. If we uh, if we look at this, it will uh, fit this to this size. And I think this is what size we had done the previews before. If we back this up and look at this full at this basically full size and hit play, uh, we'll notice uh, after the initial cache build, this will take a second. Uh, it's getting three. I was getting actually four. The reason we're getting three right now is because um, I was getting two before. Point two was our frames per second for for the each frame. Um, now we're, I was getting 0 0.4, 3 to 0 0.4. So we're almost doubling the speed by doing this one little modification. So I think that's a significant savings. It means we're getting basically almost twice the performance out of this, uh, which is important. That means it takes half as long to render. And that's huge in the in the department of render times and so forth. And it means that this could actually be done. I think it took it like 10 minutes to render out the entire sequence this this way, as opposed to 20 minutes the other way. So it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not, you know, it's, again, not going to be GLSL speed. But hey, that's pretty good. Still, uh, it's not fast enough for our purposes today, which is why. And I did, by the way, I'm going to just go back over to our other one this one here and uh we're gonna just close that because we don't need mondays or, or or excuse me monday yeah friday's uh live stream um we're gonna be doing this is today's we're gonna be starting from here and i mentioned at the end of the other one that we were gonna we i wanted people to render it out uh just render out a snow sequence i added a a, a little thing here and rendered it out um for myself um, so anyway, so here's the read now reading it. I'm going to be, uh, I'll have it set to a temp directory um, on my, at the root folder. By the way, um, I'm bringing this up because this is, this is a, something new that's happened. One of the Windows updates changed things. And if people run into a situation where we, on the Windows, where um, on the Windows 10 in particular, where uh, a, a file, Natron doesn't render to your local folder, I've had this problem for some reason, Natron loses access to, um, unless it's installed. If you use the portable version, which I often use the portable version, um, the if it's not installed, it can't for some reason get the permission to the you to to the folder to to write to to the um files sometimes so uh if you ever run into that situation where it says render error and you check the re what it says the render error problem was uh, and it says can't write the file couldn't write the file just render it to your root folder to to c drive 
um, on Windows, uh, I just put it in a temp sim place that basically that um, Blender renders to by default. It's a safe place to render. It's perfectly fine, and it works. And then I, I just created a, a Natron folder, Natron render folder for snow. Anyway, um, that's where I've been rendering it to, uh, and that worked fine. So we got um, we've got uh, the render folder, the render file here. Here's our snow, and all of its glory, all the layers. Here, well, let's just look at it just to compare um this is what it looked like before this is what by the way this is is going to change the noise pattern a, a little bit huh it looks a, a lot different well that's all right if if you render out the other pattern this is what it winds up with that looked a little funny to me i think it's 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 just a refresh bug i don't think it's refreshed all of the the palettes before anyway that's part of the reason that we i wanted people to render this out so we have the snow in its pure form so this is the pure form snow. So this is where we're going to start with, or what we're going to start with today. Um, where we would merge this in basically is somewhere in this this area, probably after this clamp node is where we would merge this in. So we'll just pretend that this would be, this is coming off like basically right there. Um, all right, enough of that. We need to, so what's, what's, what is the start? We're, we're making a defocused um, um, blurred, uh, pull in on a or having text come towards the screen um or i should say towards the screen uh anyhow um let's hit tech tab oh right we need a font oh, i didn't tell you guys the font well we're going to put text node in here um oh, i didn't set up all right let me um let me quickly I don't know if that's going to mess with the live stream. Um, one second. I'm going to make a um, to a new window. Uh, let me pull up the font. I think I put the font. Oh, I hope I put it for. Apologize. I should have had this all prepared. Uh, I think. Ah, yes, I did. Good. All right. So. Um, this is the font, and let me make sure this is set to the right size. So this is the font that I uh, used. It's called, uh, I got it off of Defont. It's a free, full use commercial. Um, it's commercial use capable, 100% free. Um, it's called uh, Crianto. Uh, and the reason is, is that this is actually going, this, this title sequence is actually going to be used. Uh, a lot of people may not know this, but a lot of times, uh, I create these, uh, some of the title sequences and so forth, if I'm actually going to use it for something and now uh, had a specific goal. Um, this is for a wee bitty spider that I might link to a little bit later for people. Um, anyway, um, so I wanted something that was, uh, that had sort of a Christmassy Gothic th uh, themed font, but also was kind of, uh, had a little bit of a creepiness to it. Um, which I felt that this has like these little spikes and bits on um, parts that you can see that they're nice and let's see if we can make this font large. Oh, there we go. We can see um, it's got nice spiky bits in here, like little almost like mandibles because this is for a little spider, as I say. Plus it has these like little webby bits. Plus it looks Christmassy. I wanted it to encapsulate all those things because it was supposed to be a multi-season from Halloween all the way to... Uh, to Christmas um, to cover multiple holidays. Anyway, um, that's besides the point. Um, might link to the, the video at a later point. So this is a font. Um, so we're going to download that. And then what we're going to do is because um, this font, I'm not positive it will work. We need to uh, select the font inside of Natron over here. So the easiest way to do that is to click on this file path. And then, um, you know what, I'm going to I also didn't um, put this into the folder. Let me grab this is a folder. I'm going to create a folder in actually. Let me put this over here for everybody to see. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it fonts and uh, or font fonts. We'll put it there. And in this fonts folder, I am going to go over to my let me see, do I have my downloads folder over? Yeah, oh, I've got my downloads open. Let me go and find the font quick. 
put it in there for everybody to have access to. Um, you can download this on your own, but uh, when I upload the project file, I will make sure that this is included. Uh, so I think it was Sorrentro, I think it was. Oh, better make sure. Anyway, um, I think this is it. We'll find out. <laughs> If this isn't it, it's going to be a problem. So we're going to go to fonts, and we can see it now in our in our nature project. It's showed up in our, our project folder. Go into there. We'll select this font. We go open, and then when once it's opened, uh, it shows it down here. We can go to our uh, font list here, and it should be under C. And uh, it, wait a minute. Uh, I think it was. Uh -oh. Crin Crintio. What? Let's make sure. Let's look at that. There it is. Yep, that's the font. All right, good. Solved. Problem solved. Everybody sees how to do that. You basically want to you tell it the location of the font file, and make sure it's relative to your project, uh, and then um, you have to pick it out of the fonts. It will appear in your font list. That's how it works. Uh, if you don't do that, it will not show up. All right, so now that we've got that, we need to create a, uh, the actual thing. If there's two lines, it's uh, we're going to say seasons. Seasons. Uh, and then we're going to we're going to create a second line. But the problem is uh, we're going to actually set the first line up first. This is going to be a lot like uh, previous uh, episodes or previous times we've done this. Um, we're going to basically create fonts that are relative to one another. So, um, but we're not going to use a transform node. We want to kind of keep this simple. In, all right, let me pour a little caveat on here. We're going to cheat today. We're going to make the, uh, an, uh, we're going to offset this with an expression. Um, let me show you why. All right, for people who might not remember this or might not have seen that episode, uh, if we put greetings on the second line, all right, and uh, we, of course, want a capital G, Seasons Greetings. All right, and then we want to uh, make this so that it's center interacted. And uh, let's see, how big did I make the font? I made it 260, so we'll make the font size 260. And there we go. So we're seeing it nice and big. But the problem we have is that these two lines are too far apart. Uh, and there's really no good way to do leading inside of at least i don't think that there is a way of changing the the font leading inside of natron it's an unfortunate thing i mean we could do it with uh if we go into pango and use the pango scripting uh, we could, we could, you know, which is you click markup and you do it. Oh, it's a pain in the butt. Um, and I, 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 it does, it's really hard. It doesn't give us visual feedback. So what we're going to do is keep it like this. And we're going to, instead, we're going to clone this. So we're going to hit Alt and we're going to hit K, which is going to throw that off into the, way off into nowhere. Why Natron does that? Oh, it's, it's the weirdest thing. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to just put that over here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to feed these in each line in individually. So on the first text node, um, actually, let's pull up the second text node and de just deconnect the, the things that we need to. So the, the clone, everything is duplicated because we want almost everything to, to transfer, except for we want to get we want to unlink the text field. So we're going to unlink it, unlink that. And then we're going to unlink the two center points. All right, and it will make sense why we're unlinking that in a little bit because we're gonna we need to unlink both of them in order to use an expression, um, and that has to do with the fact that if you, you can't just uh, if you just unlink one, you're not going to be able to right click and and set an expression, which is what we're going to do. Um, in fact, we're here now. We might as well just um, focus on that expression. So let me pull up the expression. We can set it right now. So we're gonna um, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna right click on this, set expression, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say um, we're going to first of all double click on text one. All right, so that the text one properties come up, and then we're gonna take this field here, um, the 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 center field, and we're gonna hold down control by holding down control. Um, you can see that it changes 
my cursor to to a little C or a, it looks like a C or a link. It's actually, I, I think it looks more like a sink because, but there's actually a dark shadow there. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's actually supposed to be two links, um, two links of a chain. Anyway, you take this, you control drag this over into our font area, and it creates this this field here. And so what we're going to do is put that inside of a parenthesis. Because I want to, at the beginning, I want to say, take the original distance, all right, which is going to be 540, because this is a 1920 by 1080. So 1080 being our vertical resolution, half of that is 540. So we're going to take 540. We're going to subtract the, the distance it is from the default position from whatever the seasons is going to be. So that results in zero. We can see that zeros it out. And then we need to move it to uh, to uh, where it's going to be, which is going to be, believe it or not, 540 plus, or m minus, excuse me. Hold on, I did it wrong. <laughs> I want to do 540 minus, this is supposed to be plus. All right, so we're going to do 540 plus this. So, all right, let me explain. Let me go back to here. So we inside the parentheses, we want to do 540 minus that. That's going to neutralize it. All right. That's going to put it to zero. The, we're offsetting it. It's by default. If we don't have this 540 minus, we wind up, whoops, we wind up with 540 because that's what its default starting point for the center is. All right. We can see 540. Um, then we say, so we say 540 minus that zeroes it out. But then we want to, because that's where we want the, the um, starting point of the entire, uh, or, or of this to, to start from. And then what we want to do uh, is we want to then basically say 540 plus whatever our result is, all right? So we get 540 here, and I think that's how it works. I want to make sure. So what it's going to do is take 540 and it's going to subtract this. So if, if the value, when we increase the value in, in text one, it's going to go make it the number bigger. And because we're subtracting that number from 540, it means the result of that is going to be a negative value. So it's going to be below zero. And then we want to add, bring it, push it, back up by 540. So we're going to basically take 540 and subtract, uh, we're going to add to it a negative value, which is basically subtraction. So it's going to say basically, so if we move the the, the text one up by say 50 point, uh, a value of 50, it's going to move uh, text two or the second node down by 50. And so they're both going to basically move from the center point away from the center point um, relative to one another. All right. Um, or at least that's what it's going to look like. Um, and then um, because this isn't uh, perfect, I didn't like it um, exactly. I, I felt the, the, this doesn't actually center perfectly. The way, we can see that it's a little offset. You'll notice that the, the seasons, if we look at the text here, the seasons is closer to the center point than the top of the greetings is. Um, and so I, w I felt the whole thing needed to be shifted up a little bit. And the amount that I felt it needed to be shifted up was another 100 units. So we're going to say we're going to add 100 pixels, basically, to the whole thing. And that's what this second one is going to be offset by. And that gets it. That shows you where it's basically going to be. All right. So now we need to remove the text. So we'll go back to the first, our original text here. And we'll view it, and we're going to get rid of the greetings from it. This is text one, which is this. Let's get rid of that and hit click off, and there's our seasons, and we can see it's offset. And then we're going to go over to our greetings and select that, and we're going to eliminate the seasons from that one. And now what we have is greetings here and seasons here, and they look offset a little bit. Now we need to merge them together. So we're going to hit we're going to just do a merge. It doesn't matter which one is where. So we're going to merge from the first and then put the two over one another. And it looks off right now. Right now, the seasons is below the greetings, but that's because it's we haven't offset it at all. We're going to go over here and we're going to go to this 540. And let me get up, uh, get the uh, original one up and find out. I moved it up to 
to 740. So we're going to just move this up to 740 on the center Y for the for text one. I set it to 740. And as we can see what that did over here on on text uh, one underscore two, it set it to uh, 440. So it's offset it down. It worked it in a negative direction. And um, and we wind up with this. And so we have something that's when it's all said and done, it looks pretty much centered to the screen. And that's what we want, is it to look centered relative to the entire screen. So there, that's our, that's our, our, our start point. All right. Now we need to, we need to do a couple things. We need to do color treatments to this. Um, this is our mask and it's going to set up our environment. Um, let's first work on, um, we need to do a color. So we're going to do a, uh, do a merge node. And what are we going to merge over it? We're going to merge a solid. All right, and so we're going to hit tab, tab and we're going to go type in solid. And we're going to merge the solid over it into the A input. And when we, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be multiplying this. All right, whatever the color here, let's make this a color for right now. Let's, right now it's the, it's black, which is not going to give us anything. Um, and we need to tell the merge that we want it to be a, uh, we want it to be solid. So we wind up with black. And it's not showing up because we have a it's black and b uh, it's set to over which is not going to do anything. If we keep it, if we change this color to to what we actually want, which is going to be this is going to be our center text color. So we're going to set it to red, and we can see that it's red. Well, red on top of a, a solid red color on top of this white background is not going to do anything. So we need to to tell it that we need to uh, the mer for the merge we need it to multiply. Um, and let's multiply, and there we go. Um, and so that that gives us our, our text color. This is what we are. It's basically we're created using this as a, a pseudo alpha channel, a colored alpha channel. Now, what we want to do is take this, and we want to copy this over here. Let me make sure I've used yes, that's correct. We're going to duplicate this over here, and we're going to take this out again, down like so. And this time, what we're going to do over here, actually, I don't, um, this is going to be, this is going to be the white trim, um, but we're going to do the white trim, uh, it's not going to be pure white, uh, let's, let's see what I mean by that. If we go over here and we set this to, uh, white, it's really, really bright. I decided that I liked it a slightly darker because I felt it was, it was just too Vibrant. This 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 is not a pure red. This pure the red was uh, a such it was red basically 194. Um, that's what I came up with for my red color. My white is going to be um, is going to be 192. I don't want them to be super super duper saturated because this is a dark nighttime scene. And when you're dealing with dark colors, you want it to be darker. Um, it thing bright things become too bright if you if you make them too too pure in color. So, okay, so we're going to, again, this is going to be our, our white, which is 192. We can see it's a value, just a value of 192. All right. So um, this is going to lie under the other one. Um, and, but before we do that, we need to, um, we need to um, offset it. In fact, this is actually going to go over here like so. And what we're going to do is put that down like this. Um, so why you say what's going on here? What we're going to do is we're going to put a dilate in here because this is the outline for the uh, for under our text. Um, in fact, uh, let's do let's merge this. Let's do a merge and we'll put the A over the B. And you can see this works just like a, a standard multiply. Um, or a standard alpha channel. We have an alpha channel here that's going with it. Um, but we can see that we we can barely see. We're starting to see a haloing happen from our white below it because it's not big enough. So what we're going to do is just dilate this. So we're going to actually get rid of that and hit, just hit tab, the dot on this merge node over here. We're going to hit dilate, D-I-A, dilate. There we go. Take our dilate. Oop, don't want to pull our red into our dilate. There's a dilate and we can see, and we're going to bring this dilate up uniformly. We're going to tell it we're going to bring it up, I think, two, maybe three. Let me double check mine. I want to make this the same. Oh, I actually brought it up to four units. 
So we bring it up four units, and that is the size that we want for our greetings. That's how big our outline is going to be. All right. So that's our what forms our white outline, which gets has is coming into the uh, the B input that forms the base of this, and then the 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 red gets overlaid on top of it. All right. So there we go. Now what we want to do is we need to then uh, we're going back over here to uh, white. And we're going to put a dot node off of this and just make sure that B node goes over is I won't I didn't want the, the stylate. I want this to go over into the red or merge over here and not go down here. So I want that the B input to go directly into that dilate. All right. So down here, what we're going to do is off of this, this dot node here, we're going to put in a road. So we're going to just do a straight road, not a road smooth, a road. And we're going to delete that. And now we'll view this. And for this one, what we're doing is we're pulling this in for the green. We're going to be pulling this in uh, to make a green glow around the outside. How much are we going to pull it in? Uh, I believe we pulled it in three units. So uh, let's take this in. One, two, three. Whoops, three. Three units, which brings it back just a little bit bigger. Uh, than before we could have used an, another dilate but why bother it's the same thing it's it doesn't it's not really taking any more computation time to do this then we're going to blur this because it's going to glow this is a glow of some form so we're doing a regular blur and for the blur i think i set it to i set it to 16 so a value of 16 which will give it a nice glow like that and then what we're going to do is simply take this this our, our color and we're going to again we're going to copy this we can uh well, let's take our original our red here and we're going to uh alt c this over here to make another clone of it and down here what we're going to do is we're going to take the b input uh and notice i took the to, took the solid at the same time i'm going to put this up here this is uh might as well just set this at this point we double click on the solid set that from from this red we're going to set it to a green we're going to set it to it's actually just pure green because this is a glow this should be bright and it's going to, and it's also going to be soft uh get with it's going to be merging with the background so it needs to be visible so we want it to be very very bright so we set it to just green we take that's coming in in the A, so we take the the uh, the B input of the merge node, connect it up to our uh, blur, then let's view, view this down here, and that's what we wind up with is that, and then of course we want to take this all together, and we want to merge the this as our background to it uh, with the other over it. So we're gonna hit, from this merge node, we're gonna hit M and put a merge in here, and then take our 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 red and white and merge it over it and we wind up with this and this is our final logo that's what it's going to look like uh season greetings and then uh what we're going to do is now we need to start manipulating this um so let's see uh all right so we don't want this all everything we've done up to this point we only want this to happen one time because this only needs to happen on one frame. So why not just take our disk cache nodes that we got up, up here that we've been using all over the place. Let's just take one of them. Doesn't matter which one. Remember, these are just, all these disk caches are. If you haven't seen the last episode, which you should have seen. Uh, whoops. Oh, that's not good. Ah, that should have been. Ah, that should have been. Whoa. Hey, look at that. Should have been one frame. All right. Anyway. Let's make sure those are set. Manual. Hmm. I'll have to fix that in the final thing. Um, we want to take these, make sure that it's set. This cache is manually set frame one to one. And then that frame hold is set to first frame is one. Take one of those. Any one of the ones that's in there. We're going to just uh, clone it down here. So we're going to hit alt. We're going we're, we're gonna to duplicate, not clone. Clone creates a a, a, a a linked clone or linked copy. Duplicate is Alt-C, and Alt-C will put it wherever your mouse is on, on in Natron, so we're just going to connect that up here. This is going to cache the entire thing so that we don't have to draw it repeatedly. So now it's basically, at this point, this is an image on frame one. and creates an image of our season's greeting. That way we sped this up. It doesn't have to take any more time. 
and now we can deal with this as a oh one more thing i need to check quickly i do believe that i let me hmm. all right we're gonna hmm. let me just double check something nope nope fine it's all good uh we get okay so we can see that our rod is a wee bit bigger than um is a wee bit bigger than our our image now i'm going to point something out here because we're about to do the card 3d and it's very 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 important that people understand this the do not add your card 3d to your image until after you have set up your text if your text is wider than this view at this point in time you you do not want to change it so that you wind up putting in lower t the like the greetings text for example where it says greetings if this went off the sides at this point it would throw off the center point of uh, of our card 3d node a bit and it would make it more difficult um, and we would have to stop messing around with things and doing offsets and don't do it um, always set up your get your text looking good on screen this is what i consider this is how big i want it to be at optimal viewing this is our optimal size because this is going to be defocusing afterwards it's going to basically blur away out of existence after it gets to basically this point um, this is a value size of one all right and we're going to move from in the when it's smaller it's going to get closer and it will it's going to get closer to you and then it's going to uh then it's going to come into focus and then it's going to um, stay in focus for a while till it gets to basically a size of one and then it's going to stop fading out of focus because we don't want to pixelate on the edges all right that's why we're doing this and it's important that we get that so that font size if you're going to do font sizes if you're going to mess with this in any other way if you're going to make it a bigger logo uh, i highly recommend um, maybe considering using transforms because um, uh, instead of doing that that little trick that we did to do the offset up here we might want to add transforms underneath to fix it just just advice just letting you know of a potential problem anyway um it isn't a problem it's 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 how it's going to work it just happens to be the way it works all right so now we're going to put in a card 3d so on, with our frame hold under here, we're going to take our image and we're going to put it on a card 3D. All right. For our card 3D, what we this is where we're going to actually animate it in space. We're going to be going into the background um, and pulling it forward. Um, so, right. Um, let me get this up. So uh, I need to go back in time to our beginning. So off at the beginning of this, what we're going to do is set our, um, this has a lot of controls in it. Um, the only thing we're interested in is translation. Um, we're going to be changing this. The default, when we put whatever we put in uh, to a card 3D node by default remains its original size when the card 3D node is set to a value of Z negative one. Z zero basically means that the that the transform is basically at all the card is basically behind the camera or at the camera plane which is beyond the clipping plane so we won't want to do that we're going to set this so that it's small we're going to so which means we need to reduce it more so we're going to set it back in space we're going to bring it back to a negative four at the start of this and we're going to set a keyframe here all right uh then for the next keyframe we're going to go ahead to i think the end actually Yep, we're going to go to the last frame, which is going to be frame 250. So all we have to do is hit the go to the end last frame here. And we're going to set this not to one because we want this to come past the camera. We want this to be optimal size when we get through, it, uh, get all the way through it. And it turns out that if we go negative 0.5 here, this is actually going to be our closest point. This is where it's going to be when it's um closest to us which means that when it hits its optimal point which is going to be somewhere around in here uh we'll see we can see it's getting down into the optimal point somewhere down in this this range down oh wait a minute no where is it it's right here at 214 this is this is at a value of one 
So that is where it's going to to uh, be at basically its its actual size, a one to one ratio, basically, more or less. Um, all right. Next, we have now that we have that, we need to merge this because, uh, as we know, COD three D. One of the big problems that we have is that a COD three D rendered out. If you start scrubbing through time. Um, on a card 3D when it's merged over nothing and card 3D has an alpha channel, which it does, we can see our alpha channel, um, the problem will be that card 3D will start flaking out when things are invisible. Um, so we're going to put a merge node here, all right? And uh, we're actually going to merge it because we want to retain, we're going to put the, the card 3D into the A input of this merge node. And because we want to retain our, uh, our image size, our image format we want to use a constant so we're going to do constant and we could probably pull the constant from actually up at our uh on the top of um of our original if you're gonna if you're not using if you're using the original image you could uh, feed this as a source um anyway uh it doesn't matter. We're going to, it's default. This is going to default to the project settings. And the reason we're doing this is what we're going to be doing here is we're going to tell it that the, the bounding box for this, let me just make sure I definitely did that. Nope. I have not. We're going to just keep it. That's all we're going to do for right now. We're going to do this, this node for the time being, because we're going to actually use this a little later for something, for something else. Um, this node for the time being, what this is doing is it's just ensuring that when card 3D does not have anything, it's not visible if for whatever reason, if it disappears off the screen or we rotated it or did something, um, card 3D will produce a blank frame and Natron will literally skip that frame and won't do anything. And it causes things to Natron to kind of flake out and skip frames and you wind up without cached stuff and it gets wonky. Uh, so by having a constant after it, it's going to fix that. So then what we want to do is we're going to do the defocus. Now, I, people might remember when I first did this, I was trying to use a, a, a Natron user content created node, a community plugin called defocus. I think it's under filter. Yes, right here. Whoops. On the filter, there's a defocus node. I don't know if that's going to show. Oh, good. It's my face isn't over it. This defocus node um, is interesting. It, uh, I like the look of it in some ways, but uh, it we can't use it. It's based basically off of uh, it's an you. It has aspect in, independence, so you can stretch it out in either direction. The problem is that it's based off of using a um, an erode smooth to do the blur, and we could reproduce the vast majority of it just by doing an erode smooth. And I want to bring this up to show the problem with this. Um, well, it's we're not going to show the problem, but um, basically what they're based doing is they're setting this down to a low value, something like I think it was one. And then we they took it and they basically brought this out to a negative value. In fact, when I did it originally, I just set it to negative 70. Negative 70, um, which as we can see, first of all, this creates a problem. It looks really weird. It gets all green and so forth. Uh, and that's because we're dealing with this as a, a, as pre-multiplied or unpre-multiplied. We need to turn off that and we wound up with basically this is what the defocus node more or less does. And it looks really nice. Um, in fact, I would argue that it looks in some ways a lot better than than using a blur node. But the, there's a problem with this, which is um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to animate this. And um, and I'm bringing this up because you may want to think that, oh, I might want to try this myself. Except for there's a problem when the size value for the def for the road smooth, the, there's certain ranges or certain points where if you get it down to like a point, I think it was like point. 06.062 or something along those lines it was really weird it had this one value somewhere in there where it just it decided natron decided that it was going to render this very 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 like shifted frame it shifted the black from being black to being like one percent and i tried everything to get fix it and it couldn't do it can't do it so i highly recommend 
It's nice as, as, as using the erode smooth to do this because what uh, the erode smooth will do is it will sm basically blur the colors together and you'll wind up with more of a. It, it looks nice. We'll just leave it at that. It's not going to work. So let's let's get rid of that. Um, and instead, we're going to resort to just using a blur. Will it look as good? Mm. It looks good enough for our needs. Um, and I want to let me get the blur up. Make sure I'm at the right point. Um, so yeah, I think I just set the blur to the same level. I set it to 70 to start with. And this is what I wound up with. Uh, I want to hold on. Wait, that's not right. Um, I had it a lot bigger at the beginning. Holy food. I swear I had it bigger. This is not showing. Why is this not showing? Let me get. I'm just double checking my. Okay. Uh, one second. I just need to find it and make sure that I'm getting the same value. All right. So this is should be. Oh right, we haven't animated our card 3D yet. Right. Uh, oh, yes, we did. All right. There's why. All right. That's why it wasn't looking there. There we go. That's right. There. That. This is what it should look like when it starts off. It's, is basically this. Um, and I'm just going to double check our blur to make sure that it's blurring correctly and I have all the settings set correctly. Um, whoops. Not the card 3D. Wait a minute. Have the right the blur sorry i want to make sure our card 3d was all set and our merge node was all set um a merge node on the merge node yep everything's going in it is set to there all right we'll we'll be dealing with some stuff in a, in a bit so all right so here's our blur um now we need to move, animate basically as this moves forward in time we're going to be uh, blurry, uh, de blurring this and then blurring it again. Um, so we want to go back to um, on frame uh, zero. We're going to set this, we're going to have this at, uh, we're going to set a key, all dimensions for the size. Oh, that's interesting. Wait a minute. Oh, the phone. I take it back. It is not going to. Oh. One moment. I want to make sure. Am I on? Yes. Uh, TF. Good. Uh, sorry, my frames weren't up. I want to make sure that I had the right frame up um, so that when I give us the frames, which are still not seen correctly, hold on. Just need to modify my reference one. All right. Let's go here. Frame will be on. All right, frame 25. That's what I thought. All right, so I do believe in my dope sheet. Oh, not my dope sheet, but my curves editor. I just want to verify that this. All right, so yes, we're going to do this. All right, so what we're going to do actually is we're going to actually remove this keyframe. Uh, remove key, all dimensions. We actually want to set our time to 25 for uh, interval. So, oh, excuse me, not 25, 24, because I do, uh, I'll work in the US format. So, you know, in Europe, you might do 25. But anyway, 24, which takes us up to frame 25. That's where we're going to set our first key. Then we're going to go to the next frame, uh, which is going to be frame, I think it was so... I'm having trouble not giving my, myself enough room here. Um, frame 121. So if we if we click on this a few times, we'll see that frame 121 is one, two, three, four seconds later. At four seconds, we're going to basically set this from 70 back to zero, which will bring it into focus. 
then we'll hold that for i believe what i did for the end Let me just make sure of something We're going to hold this for three seconds. So we should be at 193. Yep. We're going to set another key here at, at, uh, at three seconds. We're going to, or three seconds beyond. It's going to hold it for three seconds. And then I think I'll fade it out in two seconds. Two, yep. Two seconds. All right. So, because it takes less time for it to traverse the distance um, from where it was to this point because it's closer to the camera. So it requires less time to get to the defocus point and so we're going to set this back up to 70 for our deep focus so this is what it's going to look like at, at the end so let's just look at what that looks like in time it should render relatively quickly and we can see as it basically it's bringing it into focus And now it's in focus and it remains in focus until we get up to just before 200 and then it starts going out of focus again and there we go and by this point in time it's going to be probably hidden at this point all right so that's our anime that's the basic animation for the movement all right, let's go back. Let me pull this up, make sure I got everything. The next thing. All right, we need to, at this point, uh, we're going to merge our snow into this. Um, and so we want to do a merge here. And uh, the background um, at this point, we this is where we connect in to the, either the clamp or in our case, we're going to use our snow, which is right here. We're going to take our snow we're going to put the snow into the b input of this merge node so it's like that and then we're going to take the a input and connect it to the blur so that it goes over it and uh it looks pretty good at this point um but now we need to actually animate this all right so we've already set up our, our animation frames on this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just going to extend the, our properties so that we have two uh two values available at the same time. That way I can double click on this blur node and we get, uh, we'll have its its actual animation keys up and visible for us here so that when we go to this merge node, uh, we can use this, uh, at least I believe so. I want to make, I'm gonna just double check and make sure. I think if we go back to the beginning, so first frame, oops, first frame is going to be on frame, this um first frame so tw frame 25 we want to go to frame 25 so if we go follow the keyframes back at this point we want to take this mix node this merge node and we want to set tell it that we want to set a key first of all and we're going to tell it that we're going to mix it to zero so that it's not visible all right and then uh we want to go to the next keyframe which is 121 let me make sure of that right and it, oh wait no according to according to my thing it is not 121 we're going to go ahead to frame 97 so one two three three seconds in we're going to set this to a merge value of one so it's going to be defocused in i want it to be visibly defocused uh, or out of focus a little bit as it's at, at this point and then it's going to finish well it finishes defocusing whoa by this point in time which that was a bit weird hmm why is uh oh because it made a it made a value here all right let's uh remove this key book there we go we don't want it to fade out uh there all right so there we go um so here it's 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 at one and it remains one and then at um let's make sure we're the next thing so at 193 yep this should be set to one so we're gonna, just going to take this mix and up um, just nudge it up to two and then down to one or we'll type in one or whatever just puts a keyframe there for the for the merge node 
And then I believe it fo defocuses by, yes, by 240. Yes, at 240, it's going to, wait a minute, 241. Yes, 240, 241. Uh, we're going to set this back down to zero. So it's going to fade out. So, all right, let's go back and let's look at this. So here's our animation with the, the quote, defocus effect, or at least what should look like a defocus effect here. And uh, you're probably going to notice that this is looking a little bit it's not looking quite right. It's too bright. And you say to yourself, oh, well, part of the, the problem is, is that we did the, the defocus. Well, we did that because I wanted it to look a specific way at, at that point in time. Um, what we're going to actually do is go back to this original constant back here, and we're going to actually animate this as well. So we're going to go back to that, and let me just make sure i have that up all right and for this particular one what we're going to do is go back to the beginning all right so on frame 25 whoops 25 on this merge over which is our background this is before the blur right for this one here we're looking at we're just i'm looking at this this before it merges in the the the, the snow we're going to a start animating this. And so we're going to set a key on this merge node. In fact, let's let's shift this to... Uh, no, no, no. Actually, I'm going to keep them both up just so we still have the keyframes. Uh, we're going to set the key... So we're going to set the mix to zero. Set a key on frame 25. And then, let's see. On frame... It was frame... 145. So let's see how far out that goes. According to this, it should be 145. Right there, 145. We're going to set this up to 1. All right. And so what that's going to do is that's going to just make it fade in a little bit. It's just going to make it... We can see it's making it fade in longer. But when stacked with the other one, what it's going to do is, as we can see here, I'm going to scrub through this, it just makes it a lot more pleasing. It doesn't look... Uh, as bright, if that makes sense. Um, here, let's just... No, that's not going to work. Um, if we take this... Let's look, let's go back in here. So this is before. This is what it looks like with just the other merge node in here. And this is after. it. We're making it. All right, let's just make sure that... Just to make sure that that isn't... Um, it isn't just that. We can see that back here... Um, if we if we switch between the two, it's a, it's significantly darker in our new in a new snow because we're fading it twice, and so what that's going to do is it's just going to make it look like it's blending in. It's coming out of like a mist. We want it to look like it's coming out of a, a misty sort of snowy background. It's snowing, and so there's going to be a point in the background where the 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 this is sort of in the snow. Uh, in that background snow. So we, it shouldn't be as visible at that point, which is why we have it uh, have it fading like that. It's doing this double fade to basically create this illusion that is coming out of the snow and still is blurred. And it, so it starts coming more and more into focus. And then it ultimately comes into focus. All right, so um, that's the first part. All right, we, 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 we've got that, but there is more. There's still more. All right, so at 145, then the next one, what we want to do is get up to frame, I believe it is, again, 193. So we're going to go up to frame 193, right? I'm just going to click on it here for drag us up. And we're going to set here, we're going to set our, again, key value for um, our, let's, let's, yeah, no, for our merge seven, which is this merge. Yep, we're adding that animation to, we're going to put it to one by scrolling up and down. And then the last of course, last frame is going to be, of course, 241, frame 241. We're going to fade that to zero again. And that's just going to make it so that at the end here, it's also going to fade out a lot more. It's just going to fade out a lot more naturally. And it's going to look a lot more interesting. Let's look at it before. Let's look at... Uh, whoops. Um, excuse me. Let's look at this 
before this is fading out normally from let's just do a, a quick fade out take a look at it, what it looks like so this is just doing a fade this is doing the one fade all right and then we'll go back and we'll do that the other way by bypassing it and uh putting this down here this is the the second this is the other half of the fade with uh, out we can see it's just really really it's too bright at this point i want it to start it needs to it doesn't look like it's curving into it or it doesn't look it looks too hard if you ask me and we'll watch one more time that's just too hard it's 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 too fast um so if we do the stack the two together then we wind up with this and let's go back here to about the about here and let's hit play and we'll watch it and it should look like it's fading a lot more it's a lot more interesting and a lot quicker and it just looks a lot more natural with its fade and so that's an important thing we're using just basically two merges slightly offset from one another one is happening uh, a bit more ones can be thought of as the emerging of the snow and the going into the snow um so to speak um and the other one is the uh is the actual transition of the the actual defocusing fade all right so this one's going to handle the defocusing fading and this one's handling the snow so to speak emerging from the snow and disappearing into the snow all right so that gets us we're up to the point where we have this over the snow and it looks pretty good and we could watch this and we could we could say this is good but it's pretty good at this point how far into this let's see we are an hour and three minutes we can still finish this off we have a little bit more i want to do a background um because in the original one we had a background in there so how do we do this background we want to um we not only do we want uh, a background but we want a hold on one second i want to do yes i want to take a background we're going to merge a background in here so we're going to um we're going to take our, our our snow we're going to hit m and put a merge node in there and then we're going to come up here and we're going to do a we're going to create what could be either trees or or it could be uh mountains it doesn't really matter it's just some ambiguous triangle triangular shapes that i felt would add to the to uh the overall look so we're going to put in a roto node here so we're going to hit roto and do a roto draw and for our roto draw what we're going to do is simply all we're going to do is um let me get my other one just so i have it as visual reference okay uh, i did something that looks more or less like um i basically started here i clicked down here i went up and i did a spike and then i did another spike down here and then i did a a, a slightly higher spike and then i did a spike here then something like that then came down then i went up and then i went down and so it's just some random jaggedy bits um i wouldn't call those perfectly whatever we're gonna just do this quickly boom and we'll call that good enough all right so there we go uh, i'm gonna do a little adjustment we're gonna click down over and up that's gonna make a solid that makes this whole thing solid now we're not looking at that let's look at that roto here so we click on this we want to um we want to this is going to be a mask so we don't have to see this but one thing that we can do is uh we want to i just want to pull this over sort of make these look more like they could be potentially trees of some form so they're more uniform just a little bit i think there we go that looks more like it could be trees yeah, I bought that as trees. All right, so we're going to take this roto. What are we going to do? We're going to merge it. Oh, we're going to put a merge node in here. We're going to click off of it and then hit M to create a merge node to the right of it. I'm going to put that in as a mask. And then I'm going to take two solids. Tab. Solid. I'm going to take two solids. In fact, we're just going to copy the two solids. We're going to put solid one into one solid into the B input second one into the a input and then we're going to go into our merge and we're going to tell it um i just want to make sure no nope, it doesn't matter we don't need to do any more than that um we're telling it to merge via the mask uh, the black currently for 
solid number two, uh, we're going to set the color to, well, I actually preset these. We're going to set it to, uh, oh, I want to just double check and make sure I got the right one. Uh, we want this to be our darker color, I believe. Yes. So we're going to select this, which is this kind of purple gray. All right. So the way, the reason this is a purple gray is uh, what I wanted it to do is I wanted it to look like it's nighttime, which means it's going to be blue. Um, when you're dealing with dusk and night, uh, things, the, the colors of white things don't look white. They tend to shift into the bluish range. Um, uh, and uh, as the, when you're in snow and so forth, it gets into bluish purplish realm of, so we're at dusk area, um, which means it might be a little bit of pink from the sunset, which is why we wind up with purple. Um, so uh, we want this, this is just, this is going to be our bright. This is going to be our trees. All right. So this is going to be the bright, or, oh, excuse me. No, this is going to be our sky. I'm sorry. This is the sky. It doesn't look sky right now. Um, B is going to be the sky. Um, and then we're going to set the uh, solid number two to, uh, or, which is our A, or 2.2, excuse me, which is our A input to this other one, which is this lighter color. And we can you can copy the values off of the screen. Um, uh, I'll read them off for you. Uh, this one happens to be one. Here, I'll read off the original one. The other one was uh, uh, was 95. 95 127 and this one is 191 191 191 255 is what i use for the values for these and um and that's going to give us that as a result and let me just double check my merge node oh yes and the other thing is is we do not want it to output an alpha channel do not have it output an alpha channel because we're dealing with two solids we just want this to be a background this is going to be the merge node is going to or the snow is going to be on top of this so this should be as solid as solid can be uh which means it doesn't need an alpha channel at all um so then what we're going to do is we're going to merge this the result of this i'm going to put a merge node and we're going to put another solid on top of it we're going to just copy that that second solid put it over it and right now as you can see, it's this color. We want to make it black. So we can actually, we'll just reset it to default. Oh, uh, oh, reset default all dimensions. And that makes it black. So that if we look down here, um, so why are we doing this? What I want to do is for this one, let's take this merge node. And on this merge node, I think we want to, yes, we want to take and turn off the alpha, uh, the B channel alpha channel the B input alpha, and we want to turn on the A input, which makes the A go over the B. And then what we're going to do is we're using this to determine the t how dark it is going to be outside. And how we're going to do this is we're just going to drop this down a bit. So how far do we want to drop this down? We're going to bring it down to 0 0.4. According to my other one, it's 0 0.4, which, yep, that's what it looks like. So this is what it's going to look like. It's 0.4. Why is a point for, um, well, we're going to be blurring it and doing a few more uh, things after this. Uh, we're going to, uh, first of all, um, we're going to put a blur node after this. That just darkened it down a little bit, and it'll make more sense once we get it merged with the, uh, with the actual snow over it. Um, so we're going to put a blur node after it to blur out the background, because remember, this is out of focus beyond behind the snow. Um, and behind, this is out of the camera's depth of field where everything is looking so uh, looking good. So blur, and the, for the blur, we're going to just set this to uh, 70 because that's what our defocus amount was. Remember, that's where we started. Uh, and then we're going to cache this because we don't. This is our final image. Uh, we so we're going to put a disk cache. And we can. We didn't need to do this. We could just set it to one and one. And by the way, there's a moth flying around here. I just noticed. And uh, I, if it flies into the sea, no, I'm just letting you know there's a moth in here. So we're going to just, uh, after the, um, yeah, we're going to do a frame hold. Frame hold. And of course, it didn't merge it. We're going to take that and we're going to set that to one. And then we're going to take that, and that is going to merge over, 
Oh, wait a minute. No. That should be the background. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, no. That's interesting. Oh, right, because, ah, I remember why. So we're having this come over the other one. The reason we're doing this is uh, what I'm going to do is something we want to here um, get the maximum. We're going to get uh, we're going to instead of putting the, 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 the snow over this, we're going to put the, this over the snow. It's a little weird, but we're going to just tell it that we want to get the max. Why do we want to get the max? Okay, it's not showing the max. Why are we not showing the max? Oh, because we don't have... Ooh. Hold on. Hold the phone. No, that should have been... Something weird is going on. Let me make sure. Let me make sure I'm getting the right thing here. Yes. Well, it doesn't matter. We're going to... It'll make sense here in a minute. Well, there should be... Oh, yes, it's very, very dull. You can barely see it because our snow is very, very dark. But we have we do have snow. So when the snow is brighter than the than the foreground or, or the background in this case, it's going to show the snow. And where it's where the background is brighter than the foreground, it's going to show the the um, the basically the background. But here's the thing the reason we're doing this is because i want the snow to sort of get brighter when it goes over the background bits all right and so the two are going to sort of add together a little bit because we're not really going to have either of them at their maximum um but uh, anyway uh, uh, actually uh, uh, it's weird it's not that's not actually a hundred percent all right, well, let me bring this down. What we're going to do is we're going to set this to 0.03. That's how I did it. I'm just doing it 03. And what this is doing is, is that by bringing it down, it's going to it's going to get the, the snow is going to be brighter than it. And um, yeah, we'll wind up with the snow on top because the snow is always brighter than the other. And it's just that's just a read, 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 free draw error. Um, we'll just disconnect that for a moment and then reconnect it and we should, whoops, reconnect that. And there we go. We got our snow on top of it. So then we go back over here and we wind up with our final thing. And then what we need to do, there's two more bits before we're done. So this could be considered done at this point. Um, there's multiple ways. This is just how I did this particular effect. I would have, uh, I think I was doing a lot of experimentation when I came up with this. Probably would have changed this forward, approaching this now. Um, but part of the problem is, is that our snow doesn't actually have an alpha channel. So I would either have to multiply the snow on top of that, uh, on top of whatever was the background, or I could do max. By using max, what I've done is I've, I've made it so I don't actually have to use a clamp. That's one of the, or at least in theory, as long as neither of the values exceed one, we should not have to do a clamp. Um, and we know that the snow is not above it. And hopefully, I don't believe either any of these, because they're all overs, we're not doing math, uh, they should wind up. So max is a, a good way of keeping it from those values going above one. But anyway, um, let's do our last bit, which is I want to give this a bit more. I want there to be interplay between in this glowiness that's happening here. We have glow on the green, but I want the red and the white and the green to all sort of interact with one another. And the way we're going to do that is we I want there to be the, the green glow looks good, but we can make the whole overall thing a little more glowy by putting in dun, 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 a glow node. Um, so we're going to hit tab, type in glow like a glow node, node, and what we're going to do, I think, I, did I even change anything? I don't think I even changed anything. I just put the glow node in, and I thought, hey, the defaults looked actually pretty good from what I saw. So, let's see, before, let's zoom out, and hopefully this will refresh. So, let's look at this before and after. So, we have it in focus. So, this is before... And when we do, and then I'll enable the, the glow node and we'll see after it should get just a little bit. Oops, wait a minute. There we go. There we go. We can see it just got a little bit brighter. Looks a little bit better. 
All right. So one last thing is we want to put in, of course, a clamp just beyond the safe side. Let's just double check our alpha channel, make sure our alpha channel is solid white. It is good. Good. Um, let's hit A here on over the view and we'll put a clamp node in just to ensure that everything is we don't want that glow pushing everything above so we clamp it that gets should make everything correct and um all right so obviously this is a two-part piece a uh, two-part thing if we had wanted to use this instead i just want to show that this will still work with our original image if we just take this and we pop this into our original clamp or into our original image here of course, this has changed a bit. The snow pattern has changed. It's a bit weird. I don't know why the snow pattern has changed. It looks like... If I didn't know any better, I'd swear... That looks like a redraw error of some form to me, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, hmm. We may... We, if... if well, that's how you would connect it into it. Uh, if this ever, if this turns out that this is, uh, that this changed the actual pattern so that it, it looks a lot less dense for some reason, uh, even though this shouldn't have done that. Um, and if that, that ha turns out to be the case, what we could always do is just uh, increase our, our sigma value just, you know, on one of the, each of these, we could bring our sigma value up and that would increase the amount of snow on each layer. We'd have to do it for each one of the layers. Um, I'm not bringing it up to like 1.1. This is not refreshing, so um, let's see. There we go. Work that time. So there we go. So yes, you could bring this Sigma value up if you wanted to, to get more snow. Um, that's just you know, I'll leave that up to people. We're not going to play with that too much because I don't want to drag this on. I'm just going to leave it alone and we're going to go back to revert to our, um, to using the, the rendered one from the last time that I told people to render out, which is this. And you could just, you know, output a uh, connector node up here. And the result of this, of course, let's save this. Let's do, uh, the, you'll notice I've called this live sped up 01. We're going to do a new project version. I'll probably rename this for the final thing when I go to upload it. Uh, and I'll organize this a little bit better. Um, and so there we go. This is our final, uh, this is our final project, uh, or more or less our final project. And uh, the result is going to basically be our today's goal, which was this. <laughs>